So I like to use a 0.12 to start my wound. Um, and uh, I'm going to be making a temporal or maybe just a little bit super temporal wound. Um, I really like the temporal approach and, and I like it for several reasons. One, uh, this is the farthest point from the visual axis. So if you go superiorly, you are closer to the visual axis than if you go uh, uh, temporally. And then the other reason is that if I go temporally, then my glaucoma colleagues just love me because I spare all this superior conge for them. So should the patient need any glaucoma surgery in the future, you've got good um, conjunctiva uh, uh, available. Now, of course, with clear cornea, you still spare the conge, but here you have no problems at all for them to make their flaps and uh, make their corneal tunnels. I like to uh, grab where I'm going to make my main incision. There are many ways to do this. I'm going to just show you mine. And then I like my stab incision about uh, my paracentesis port about 90 degrees or 70 to 90 degrees. And I like to go pretty flat and uh, just at the limbus and I'll enter and I'll go straight in. I'm looking at my internal diameter right here and gauging a diameter that's going to allow me passage of my cannulas comfortably um, and that will be uh, it's very suitable. The other thing is that I will look to markings because sometimes it's very hard to know where this is. And so I will look to markings on the conge. If you get a little bit of blood uh, bleeding, that tells you where your site is because sometimes it's very hard to find. Now we're going to put in some vision blue. So um, we're going to go through our stab incision here and we're going to inject vision blue. We used to inject an air bubble because of uh, epithelial toxicity, but we found with the small amount of tripan blue that we're putting in and the quick irrigation, the epithelium tolerates this just fine. So we put in a little bit of um, vision blue, and now we're going to irrigate that vision blue out. I'm going to prime my viscoelastic. And I'm using viscoat here, and this is going to give us some viscodilation and open the chamber. If there's an air bubble, I try to get beyond it and either express it to the side port or around where my main wound is going to be. I tend to fill the chamber tight, and then I will grab onto uh, my side port for control. So I like the 0.12s, um, and I'll just use the single tooth just inside the... the uh, side part wound. I'm not grabbing endothelium. And I will score epithelium just at the limbus. And that gives me an initial placing for my uh, keratome. A lot of these keratomes are marked. And you can see the mark on this keratome. And it shows you where you have to advance into cornea before turning the corner and uh, entering the anterior chamber. And that gives you uh, a biplanar effect. Now, here, I could use a cystotome, but what I'm going to do is redirect my knife and I'm going to enter directly into the anterior capsule. I'm going to come back to the same plane so I don't extend my wound anymore, and that way I don't need a cystotome, and I'll take the capsule rexus forceps. You can see this clearly. I'm just going to inject some viscoelastic behind it to clear it. You notice I like to grab the wound. You don't need to grab the wound, but I do like to grab it and give me some control over the eye. I would make my anterior capsulectomy with the cystotome instead of my knife here. And then what you do is go just underneath the capsule. You do this with your cystotome. If you're using cystotome, we're going to lift up a flap and we'll lift it up to about the diameter that we want and we can start our, our CCC. And the key thing of the flap is grabbing about a millimeter to two millimeters away, keeping that fold. That fold is a critical part, and it's that fold that gives you control right there, and keeping that fold all the way around. And sub-incisionally, at about 11 o'clock, you want to grab, and you want to take it all the way around to the other side, and often there's an opportunity to 
re-grab that side as well and you can finish off your your capsule or excess. You don't have to take the flap out of the eye. Um, and of course the next step is hydro dissection, but you want to make some room in the anterior chamber before you hydro dissect. There are people that will grab um, or hang on to the uh, sclera or conge here and depress the eye to force some viscoelastic out. I like to just irrigate the, uh, the anterior chamber in the center of the chamber while pressing down on the, on the bottom lip and you can see a little bit of that viscoelastic evacuating, giving me room in the eye to hydro dissect. I hold my cannula horizontally, I just get underneath the capsule and then just to the pupillary edge. Once I'm at the pupillary edge, I'll infuse and I'll look for the wave. And if you notice, I'm also decompressing that eye. And uh, here it's gonna be hard to see the wave because of the cortical nature of this cataract, but I'm constantly decompressing because you don't want to create a situation of an anterior capsular block. This is where fluid gets behind the lens, pushes the lens up against the capsular axis edge, and then uh, when you infuse more fluid, you get a rupture of the posterior capsule. And here we are infusing this other side. And now I'm gonna see if this lens rotate. And I always tell my trainees, hold the lens, hold the cannula like a pencil, and start from the left and try to rotate to the right. If that doesn't work, go the other way. And we have some rotation there. I don't know if you can appreciate that. Yes. But I can see rotation. If there wasn't, I would just continue to hydro dissect until I got rotation. And so nuclear disassembly now depends on the type of cataract. And here I have a, a Kelman tip and uh, it's got a 45 degree angle. And I like to start in prefaco. Prefaco gives me uh, a vacuum of 400, an aspiration flow of 30, but I have no ultrasound uh, power. How do you enter? I like to enter on the side. Uh, some people will invert the, the uh, phaco tip to enter, and then I rotate once I get inside. I also like to hang on to the side port again. Um, this side port, it will not affect the way this side port heals. What are the downsides of grabbing the side port? Well, you can get some fluid egress and control, loss of control of the anterior chamber, but I don't find that to be the case. So now, in prefaco, I'm just going to aspirate some of this cortex. I'm cautious about approaching the, the uh, capsular border, and I'm just going to aspirate away. And I'm going to introduce the, the chopper here. If you want, you can try to rotate a bit as well and get some of this. So now we're, we're ready to uh, begin disassembling the nucleus. Uh, what I'm going to do for this, this case is uh, a stop and chop to demonstrate that technique. And uh, so I'm going to groove here. I'm going to chop and then fracture the uh, lens into two uh, halves, and then I will chop the two halves to disassemble and remove. And so I'm in sculpt now, and I'm going to start at one end of the capsule rexus. I'm going to go straight across to the other end of the capsule rexus. I'm going to widen it just a little bit. Remember that the lens is shaped like a bowl. And so we've got to go down into the bowl and then come up the other wall of the bowl. And I'm looking down at the base of that lens to see my depth. And I can actually see some of the retinal reflection coming through. And that gives me a little gauge on how deep I am. Now, I have pretty reasonable depth here. I'm going to put my phaco tip right down in the base. I'm going to put my chopper in front of my phaco tip, and I'm going to separate. And I should be able to tease that lens apart. Then I can use some cross-sword technique here just to push the other half off. 
and we have a nice fracture of the lens into two halves. And so now I can rotate that lens. Maybe I could have hydrodissected a bit more. And now we can go to chop. And I'm going to use a horizontal chopping technique. And so I'm going to use some vacuum, a little bit of FACO to adhere. I can hear the vacuum going up. I'm going to slide underneath the, the anterior capsule, get behind it. Bring the chopper in towards the phaco tip and then separate to the side and that gives us two quadrants there. And I like, since I'm right here, I can take this piece out, bring it up to the capsular plane. You notice because it's a Kelman, I've rotated my Kelman so I'm not down in the bag but I'm about at the, the iris plane and I'm going to eat that piece there. So now I've, I, and I'm going to continue piece by piece like this. I'm still in chop. And I'm not so worried about the bag coming up to my tip because I've got this big cataract holding it back. And in fact, I can grab this piece and pull it into uh, the anterior chamber. And here I'm just going to be able to chop it in half to have two pieces. And I can disassemble. You can see that my chamber is... N I'm losing a bit of chamber maintenance because of my chop. And I'm going to go to quad. And now my quad is uh, not as high uh, a vacuum. I can adhere this. I'll bring it up. We can chop that. And actually, it'll, it'll actually just come. What I tell my trainees always is that here is the midline, and I don't want them to be uh, eating the pieces beyond the midline, and I don't want them in the bag. I want them at the level of the capsular plane. So you can go into the bag, grab a piece, bring it up to about the midline, above the capsular axis, and that's where we should be doing our breaking up the, the nuclear flagrant. So now we've, we've got the nucleus disassembled and removed, and we're going to go to cortical cleanup. So now we're going to go to the irrigation aspiration, and I'm going to my cortex setting. And with my cortex setting, I have a vacuum of 500, aspiration flow of 40, so it's high vac, high flow. And we're going to start the irrigation and go into the eye. Again, I like to hold on to my side port because it allows me maneuverability. The downside is some people say that it, it does some damage to the side port. I don't see that. And some people say that you get loss of fluid from the side port and less of a chamber, and that is true, but I find I cope well with it. Here, what we're going to do is go underneath the capsular rexus, adhere some of the cortex, bring it past the capsular rexus, and then I'm going to give it maximum aspiration When you have a new epinuclear plate, you want to try to bring that whole plate forward. So I'm pulling the different sides. And with a big epinuclear plate like this, um, if you can get underneath it, that makes a difference. And often the epinuclear setting of your, your phaco tip is very handy to remove that. But sometimes if you don't know the thickness of the plate, 
you don't feel so comfortable going in to uh, pull these pieces out with the with the fago tips. Now it's a bit of a floppy bag, but it's uh, it's going to be fine for this lens. And so, as we talked about uh, this morning briefly, we have some lens epithelial cells here, and uh, and while they're important for forming uh, the seal around that bag, uh, sometimes they can lead to capsular phimosis. And so, I do a little bit of lens epithelial uh, cell cleanup because I know that they're important, but I don't want too many of them remaining. Uh, with a polish technique, I'm at a vacuum of 50 and an aspiration low rate of 12. So it's uh, low vac, low flow, um, and it's quite a safe technique. So that should be very good to uh, put in the lens now. For lens insertion, we're going to use a cohesive viscoelastic that's going to allow easy uh, removal. We're aiming for a plano for this woman. I like to use my 0.12s as counter traction. I just place my 0.12s into the side port uh, for counter traction and then I can uh, put this lens in. It's a big cartridge and that's why it's a tight squeeze and uh, we're just on top of the capsular bag and now I'm just inserting the lens and I can actually see it underneath the bag and then I'll use the Sinsky hook to ensure that the lens is into the bag and you always want to make sure that the haptics are off the optic. All right, I'm going to use the uh, irrigation aspiration tip to remove the, the viscoelastic. And again, sometimes just putting the tip in and irrigating. Look at all the viscoelastic starting to come out just from the irrigation. And then we'll aspirate. I do like to... Uh, uh, see if I can get underneath the lens and here I'm underneath the lens removing the viscoelastic from underneath and as long as if you can appreciate my port is facing the endothelium as long as my port is facing the endothelium I'm safe I'm not going to get that bag and so we've removed the the uh, viscoelastic and now the last step is we're going to hydrate the wound um, I like to hydrate only the edges of the wound and I use a BSS on a, on a cannula and uh, just with a little bit of pressure I'll uh, infuse fluid to see the cornea develop some edema as it swells and as it swells it seals that lens closed. And then I will just hydrate often just one side of the, of the side port is enough to close it. I'm happy with these wounds, and so I, I don't often check the wounds. I will go in and center uh, the lens to make sure that that lens is nice and centered on the capsule rexus, and I'll adjust the pressure when I'm in there, and then uh, check the pressure afterwards. That's a pretty nice pressure, and we have uh, nicely sealed wounds, and so that's the end of the operation. Thank you.